My guest today is Millie Louise, scientist, climate change worker and artisan chocolate maker. And on today's episode, we talk about the provenance of chocolate making, turning this into this, which is actually melting because it knows I want to eat it. <laughs> Millie, how do people contact you? Okay, so you can find me um, on www.puremillchocolate.com, um, Instagram at puremillchocolate, or you can come chat to me personally at Noosa Farmer's Market every Sunday. Stay with us right to the end. My name's Robin Cook. This is Stories from the Red Couch. I know you'll love it. So Millie, you're an environmental scientist. Can you tell me what type of work you've done in that role? Yep, so um, I started studying here at USC in 2011. Um, when I graduated, I went straight over to South America and started doing climate change research in the Andes. Fabulous. Yeah. Uh, that we must have been so exciting. Yeah. We discovered eight new species while I was there, so that was really wow. incredible. Um, and then I've done various work on the Sunshine Coast, such as tracking koalas with GPS and doing tree planting and bush regeneration work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, is there a lot of work on the Sunshine Coast for an environmental scientist? No, no I didn't no. think so. I know out of um, my class, one person has a job. Oh, so yeah. how big was your class? Oh, this this is from the year. From yeah, from all the years. Um, oh my god. Yeah, I know. Several people have had to start their own business or go into other industries because there is no work around here. Mm, that's incredible. So there's an opportunity. There's an opportunity for the Sunshine Coast. We've got all of these graduates yeah. um, and looking for some good work, solid yeah. work. And we have the most amazing environment here. I know. It's just, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. So it's beautiful. Yeah. We need to look after it yeah. and we need some environmental scientists to do that. Yes. Yeah. That's not your only degree, is it? <laughs> no. 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 So uh, tell me about that. Yeah, so after I, I found it hard to remain in employment in the science industry, I went on to study my other passion, which is nutrition. Yeah. That's brilliant. Uh, I've got a great interest in nutrition as well. Where did yeah. yours come from, do you think? Um, I've just, when I was 19, I always kind of had that. I started getting into health and nutrition as a woman, trying to look after my body. And yeah, and then I just it never left i just always had an interest as always buying nutrition books and, yeah. and, and so cooking. yeah so so no work in in science no um and i you know i just feel like really stressing that point <laughs> because we're yeah. pushing women particularly into the sciences yeah um, there needs to be something at the other end definitely but what happened when you finished your nutrition degree oh the exact same thing i love the sunshine coast i wanted to stay here but there was no work yeah. in nutrition either so it's, it's just astonishing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. So what sort of roles would you expect to have on the Sunshine Coast? What, what sort of work would you like to have here? As a scientist? Yeah, as, yeah, a, as well, a food scientist. Uh, well, like you said, well, it, with the environmental science, yes. we live in such a diverse, beautiful landscape and it, for us not to be able to find work here is just mm. strange. And then with the food science, it's the same thing. We've got so many good farms and producers and why are we not able to get work here? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So what did you do? So yeah. after all that, um, I ended up working at the farmer's market and um, yeah, and then I started making chocolate. So that was my next big thing. Yeah. yeah. So how do you, I mean, I feel like I've made chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like getting chocolate and melting it and making Easter eggs for my yeah, kids. Yeah. That's not what you do, is no, it? No, not Ta at all. Tell me about it. I'm so fascinated by this. Okay, so I get the actual bean, which I did bring. It's under that little piece of paper. Okay. I'm just going to get that yeah. out. So I get the bean. Ah. And I turn it into a chocolate bar. Ah, so that's So it's not incredible. just melting chocolate, it's literally no. from, made from scratch. All right, so tell me, the, what the, are you allowed to tell me the process? Of or course, is it it's a not secret. secret? No. no secret? No, so the beans get lightly roasted. They're a special bean from um, Peru. Yes. And they're, they're quite delicate. And so they get lightly roasted. Then I crack them and the husk comes off. And then I put them in a big stone grinder. Mm -hmm. And that gets stone ground for around three days. 
Really? Yes. Seriously, like continuously for yes. three days grinding? So it can go wow. from, from 24 hours and then I'll continually taste it until I think it's ready and it can take up to three days. But it, so it doesn't taste like the chocolate that we're used to, does no. it at that point? So when you're tasting it, what are you what are you looking for? Well, it's naturally very bitter at first and it's got lots of acids and different compounds in it. Mm -hmm. So when you're stone grinding it, it's releasing all those acids and it, it's making it just a better flavor all the, right the chocolate flavor that we're all used to okay yeah that really plays into your nutrition and f yeah. and science background doesn't yeah, it definitely. that's fantastic so what happens no 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 hang on a tick where did you get the stone from to do the grinding i bought it <laughs> just, just like that oh, i think yeah. i'm going to make chocolate <laughs> no, i need a stone no so this is over the years of when i've been doing it i mm -hmm. had to in, re keep reinvesting in the business and okay. eventually upscale and get and get yeah. the stone grinder as the business is growing so how long have you been working on this the business yes. has been running for three and a half years now that's fabulous yeah good on you okay so we've ground the beans yep beans pods yep the, w once they've been cracked and yes. dehusked then i like um, i get a bat and i crush them all <laughs> up into the nibs and then they go on the stone grinder okay yeah all right and then what happens after the grinding so when they get down to like a liquor then i add the different sugars and salt and cinnamon and flavors and then yeah then i set it yes and then you can either age it i'm not at that point yet all of right. aging chocolate um, but i want to be and then so what what what's that process so that develop like? that keeps developing the flavors ah. so what you do is you just put it aside doesn't yes. have to be refrigerated or anything and you just let it sit for how long just like wine okay. it, it can be up to three three weeks up to two years wow yeah. okay yeah and and you've tasted aged chocolate no oh okay no i, w I would love to but we just don't have we don't have it here. So I'm Australia. thinking, now I'm thinking that I can buy chocolate off the shelf in the supermarket. That's probably aged. Yeah. yeah not but the same thing. It's not thing. the same, no, no. So what you're doing is really artisan. Yes. Chocolate crafting, isn't yeah. it? In the same way that we have crafted artisan beer and yep, definitely. Uh, and other things Specialty like that. Specialty coffee, craft yeah. beer, and then there's craft chocolate. That's so. fantastic. Yeah. How delightful. Uh, how do you get all of the different flavors because i've seen your website your blog yep. and you do all sorts of things and yes. for the meet the makers yes uh, a couple of weeks ago that the food and agribusiness network yeah. ran you made a special chocolate yes, didn't I you did, tell yes. me about that <laughs> okay well i'll get back to the flavors first oh, yes. so Please do. i do the big batch up and i set it and then i individually temper it so mm -hmm. i get a big granite slab i temper the chocolate then i put the flavors in so that's melting it yeah yeah yeah, melting it and heating it because mm -hmm. you want certain crystals. Otherwise, if you don't, it's just going to melt when you eat it. Okay. So once I get the right crystals, then I put the flavors in and then put it in the molds and set. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. yeah. And so can you see that happening or is it like a temperature no, thing? No, it's or a it's temperature just... thing. So All I have right. to continually check the temperature. Yep. And once it gets down to 28 degrees, I then have to reheat it to 32. And then I can put it in the fridge and it will be fine. I think it's incredible how... And I, can't, I don't even know when this started, <laughs> but how we've got to this point where you know the structure of it and, and, and the melt point in your yeah, mouth and yeah. all of those things yeah. over the years, that, how that's developed. Oh, yeah. yeah. There must be incredible history around that. Yeah, lots of, lots of learning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So tell me about the food and agribusiness, Meet the Makers yes. chocolate. So there was a competition. Okay. And we all had to do a pineapple flavoured something. So I did a pineapple cheesecake flavour. And oh. because all my product's vegan, there's no milk added to it. Um, I kept it vegan, but I did the cheesecake, but I did it with macadamias oh, and lemon. How beautiful. It was, and it was gooey and... Oh, so yeah. it was actually a cheesecake. No, Is that, it's it, a was, chocolate it bar. was a chocolate bar. And then I, I filled it with the cheesecake filling oh. and put chocolate over the top. Oh. So you bit into it and it had that caramelly, gooey center. Oh, which was, Millie, that yeah. sounds divine. Yeah. So is that going to be a product on, in no. your line? No. No, that's <laughs> too much <especially>. work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So no. what sort of flavors do you have? So I have, I actually have two new flavors coming out. Um, so I don't know if I can say when this is going to be broadcast. Oh, well, it, it's not coming out till Sunday. So, yes. um, but I have um, an orange and chia flavor, yep. um, a mint 
I have a fruits of the forest. I have a banana bread flavor. Mm. Um, I have a plain 76% dark and a probiotic and hemp seed. Yeah. Wow, that sounds fabulous. Yeah. And so how do you, how are you determining what kind of flavors you want in the chocolate? Is it just you it's saying, just, oh, I think I might just yeah. do? Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> And uh, uh, I reckon your family and friends are pretty happy about you being in yes, this business. Yes, yes, they love it. They Especially love it. my mom because she's a diabetic oh. and she can't eat regular chocolate. It raises her blood sugar. She okay. can eat mine because it, it has no refined sugar it's, and it's that, all natural. That is fabulous. Yeah. So, so she's diabetic and she yeah. can eat your chocolate. Yeah. So that's a big plus. That's a yeah. big plus. What a winner. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, You've been honing this over those three years. Yep. What have you? What do you do now that's substantially different to what you did oh, when you first started? So many things, honestly. <laughs> because you're running your own whole business. It's yep. not just about making chocolate, is oh, it? Oh no, there's so many different roles that you have to play. So when I first started, it was aimed at a different audience almost. Um, I was doing raw chocolate and nothing was cooked and it wasn't made from the bean. It was made from a big block of paste that I used to buy, which mm -hmm. was just 100% 100, 100 ground chocolate. It was just the beans that had been pre-ground and I was buying it. So I would melt that down and make it into the chocolate bars and that was my raw chocolate. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started learning all the science behind it and about different reactions and when you actually roast the beans, it brings more antioxidants to it. So I'm like, okay, well I should be roasting it then if it makes the flavor better and it's better for you, okay. So that's when I started doing things different and I had all superfoods added to my chocolate. And then I realized people aren't really buying it because of that, they're buying it because they want a treat that tastes really good. So that's where I've changed my flavors and I've yeah I've been developing it. Mm, that's fabulous. And what about the business side? How have you gone about developing it oh. as, a, <laughs> as a business? <laughs> well, I need help, which is, so I've just gotten into the Grow Coastal program. Fantastic. Yeah. What a great program oh, that is. It's amazing. And they're helping me to run the business. Wonderful. They're teaching me everything from accounting and manufacturing, packaging everything that I need to know that I don't know mm. yeah mm. it's fantastic and it's accessible nice people easy Lovely. to yeah. yeah and it's I think it's in its third year yeah now yeah so they've obviously learned a lot of lessons over the, oh, the yeah, couple of definitely. years that they've been running it as well yeah that's fantastic uh any uh nice juicy bits of information that you've got that you it's like one of those oh moments um the the most that i've gotten out of it was the very first session and it was with a lady named robin mm -hmm. um robin pullman, pullman and she teaches yes. you how to talk yes. and how to pitch and she is just it's been like life-changing she's, she's fabulous she's isn't amazing she? yeah 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 that's good and so yeah. that's given you the confidence to go out and yeah definitely and talk about what it is that you're doing yeah yeah but you had um you was talking about you've sold it at the you sell it at the markets yep. at the noosa farmers market yep. so how were you encouraged to go from making it yourself to making it into a product tell me yeah, about that okay so i was working for the farmers market and um it was crazy 12 hour days and yeah it was 3 a.m to 3 p.m mm -hmm. um and i just brought some in for my boss and just said like, yeah, have a go at this. This is what I do as a hobby. And he's pretty much said like, you're not coming back to work. Like you have to be <laughs> selling this and you're crazy if you don't. So I actually didn't come back after that. I came back uh, in a couple of weeks w with my own soul there. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. That's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. And so it's not just the chocolate, but it's the packaging and pricing. Yeah. How hard was that? Yeah. It's so hard when yeah. you're trying to price and you're, you're scared. You don't want it to be too expensive. You don't that's want it right. to be too cheap. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's all these lessons I had to learn. Oh, that's incredible. What a fabulous journey you've been on. Yeah. I'm so excited <laughs> for you. I'm so excited Thank because you. you've, 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 you're highly educated and rather than despairing around the lack of employment opportunities <laughs> for yeah. someone with your qualifications, you've just gone, that's okay because I'm going to create my own work yeah and I personally I think you need to be applauded just for that in itself because Thank that's you. a wonderful thing yeah yeah Thank you. so Millie how can people find <laughs> out about you um, you can go on my website puremillechocolate.com uh, follow me on Instagram I do a lot of social media posts 
Um, and then you can come chat to me at Noosa Farmers Market every Sunday. Fabulous. My guest today is Millie Louise and uh, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. Yeah, so I have like where it comes from, the branding process, me tempering.